Hi. Thanks. Hi. I I remember to hit record, so you guys <laughs> don't have to remind me. <laughs> oh, I wanted to remind you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Katie. <laughs> so, um, guys, um, Zach Slobin is on the call with us tonight. This is week eight of our Blitz. I'm so proud of you. You guys have invested two months of your lives into your business showing up on phone calls. So tonight we're gonna to talk about leadership development and Zach is probably one of my favorite, favorite people. I met him at my first Top Achievers in California. I was there solo and a little nervous and a little out of place. And honest to goodness, I felt like I didn't belong. You know, I'm seeing like all these like ice of people that I follow, you know, on Facebook and they got their hair did and they look really nice. And there I am with like mom leggings. And I met um, Zach and Eden and he was just amazing and forthcoming. And we talked about, you know, what being a leader is and, and some of the books that he's read and the coaches that he used. And that's always really stayed with me because I've never worked for a place where people genuinely offer you advice and really want you to succeed. So uh, I don't know what rank you are. We never talk about that stuff, but I know he's an isogenics millionaire. He's an incredible um, person. He's a start 1000, I think. He's on the FAB committee. Um, he's an incredible speaker. If you guys haven't seen him, you're going to. Please follow him on Facebook. So welcome to the call, Zach. Uh, thank you. And you're the best. And I always think back fondly on that first time at Top Achievers. And I just love everything that you've created and your stories, but always reminds me of what's possible in, in network marketing and how this business creates the most equal opportunity playing field of anything else on the planet. And I think, um, I don't know, I feel like over the last couple of years, this might be like my fourth or fifth time coming out on a call with you guys. And so it's just, it's good to be back. Um, good to be back. And I'm just grateful to be here. So thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. So tonight I really wanted you to discuss leadership. What is a leader? Am I good enough to be a leader? I'm enrolling people, but nobody wants to follow. What am I doing wrong? Let's, let's really get into all things leadership because I don't know about you guys, but I, most of my team uh, came on for the shakes. Right? We came on to lose weight and get healthy and, and drop a few pounds. And we loved it so much. We couldn't help but start telling people about it. And now we're put into this position where you're like, okay, I have a team. What am I doing with all these people? How do I guide them? How do I help them really grow into what I know is possible? So leadership development for me, it, it's something that you kind of grow into because I'm not the same person today that I was six years ago. And I really think a lot of it is showing up. I think a lot of it is not comparing yourself. And a lot of it is just giving yourself grace, embracing the suck. So when you came into this, and I know this wasn't your first experience with network marketing, and when you started, you were so turned off by the whole you know, experience that you weren't quite sure if you would do it again. So. How did you grow into such a magnificent leader? Well, I, I don't know that I'm a magnificent leader. Um, thank you for that. I, I don't know that I am. I just know that um, I know that I spent a good portion of my life living in a way that was out of alignment with who I really am. And I led my life from a place of ego and I led my life from a place of um, craving external validation in such a severe way that it ended up crippling me. And I sabotaged my entire life because of, I lived my life based on who I thought I was supposed to be as opposed to who I really am. And, and, and by wearing that mask and living that way, I ended up um, dead broke living on my mom's couch at 27 years old. And so it's, I think it's less about me being a magnificent leader, Angela, and more about me just realizing that how I was living my life was extremely selfish, extremely self-serving and completely about ego and about me. And what I kind of learned while really fighting for my life, quite frankly, 
while living with my mom was that 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 maybe what all these other people who I'd studied for years and intellectually understood, maybe there was something to be said about this whole, you know, service to many leads to greatness, you know, and maybe there's something to be said about, you know, providing value in people's lives. And maybe there's something to be said about showing up in a way that it's not about me and in a way that I can, 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 can serve other people. And what, what if, what if I just start to live from a place of giving as opposed to constantly taking and so I think that's what you're seeing today. I think it's the result of that more so than it is me being anything phenomenal, if you will. We, we laugh and we call you like the great Buddha because some of the stuff you spit out, we're like, damn, that's good. <laughs> and it, it, to me, it just seems like you were always like that. But it is a growth process, right? It, it is because from the first time you spoke on stage, it's a lot different to who and, and how you come out now, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's all, that's part of the transformation. And I, if I could, I would, my mom's in Israel right now. Otherwise I'd plug her onto the call and she could very clearly tell you how I have definitely not always been this way. That I, that I assure you that, yeah, guaranteed. <laughs> I was a punk. Yeah. So if somebody wants to grow, if somebody wants to improve, if somebody wants to be the type of person that their team can follow and admire, what do we have to do to, to live into that role? I think the first thing is getting a really clear idea of what leadership means to you and what are the core character traits of what you consider to be a leader. You know, what are, what are the character traits? What are, and let's, let's just make this interactive, right? Type in the chat box, like what are some of the character traits that you identify with leadership? And, and just type in the chat box. This is, a, this is a conversation. Let's go back and forth a little bit. So I'll just open the chat. Integrity, right? Authentic and dependable, mental toughness, motivated, always showing up, right? What else? There's 103 people dialed into this call. Collaborative, they go first, right? What else? What are some of the things? They're coachable, credibility, consistent, brave, supportive, right? Caring, willing to do the work, never give up. They're, they're service-oriented, inspiring, organized. Integrity again comes up. Hungry, right? So, so that's the big thing is you get really clear on what are the character traits that I, that I, that I identify when it comes to leadership, heart-centered. I love that. Supportive and visionary, right? What are, the, what are the character traits that I identify with leadership? And then what are the areas in my life? What are areas in my life where I'm not showing up at 100% of that thing? So if I wrote integrity, for example, right? If I wrote integrity, integrity is a big one when it comes to leadership. Where am I out of integrity in my life? Where am I out of integrity in my life? Now, oftentimes we'll think, well, I'm in integrity when it comes to my isogenics business, but I'm out of integrity in my, in my private relationships, my personal relationships. Well, guess what? Out of, out of integrity in one area means out of integrity in another area. Everything we do is just a reflection of all the other areas. So what are the areas of your life where you're not playing full out and you're not becoming the person that you just wrote in the chat box? And chances are the thing that you chose to write is the area in which you've either already grown quite a bit or it's the area in which you have room for growth. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to say that again. So whatever you wrote is, chances are, it's an area in which you've already grown or it's an area in which you have room for growth. Now, the latter of what I just said, saying it's an area in which you have room for growth, that's going to be the reality for the vast majority of people on this call, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that the first step to transformation in any area of our life is acknowledging the ways in which we've contributed to our results as we have them right now. It's a high level of awareness. And so one of the ways in which I've kind of grown into who I am today is by self-inflicted high, high, high accountability. Because here's what I did. I put my life on massive display back in the day when I was running around like this egomaniac. It was all about me. Look at me, look at me, look at me. But when my world came crumbling down, I reverse engineered the process. And, and to this day, this is how I live my life, or at least I do my best to. I inverted the process and I said, okay, what if people really could see me? What if people really could see my day-to-day -day actions, my day-to-day -day choices? If I had a documentary film crew following me around 24 hours a day, seven days a week, would I make the choice that I'm about to make right now? Would I want the people that I claim to want to influence and impact, want them to see what I'm about to do right now? 
And because I was clear on what my values were moving forward in my life, it became very simple. It became very simple. Is the action I'm about to take in alignment with my highest values? If the answer is yes, I do it. If the answer is no, then it's a clear no. Simple as that. And when I started living my life by, by having that self-inflicted high accountability, taking complete and total responsibility for how I was showing up, well, guess what, you, guess what started to happen? I started to reprogram my brain. I started to reprogram my habits. I started to reprogram my unconscious mind so that I would show up in integrity with everything I did. So I would go first. So I would have courage. So I would feel more confident. So I could be more compassionate. So I could express more empathy. So I was willing to share more of myself in a real way. And that's what changes the game. That's what will change the game for you is if you're willing to imagine that there is a camera following you around 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I promise you that it'll light your world on fire because it's going to really force you to look in the mirror. It's going to really force you to question what it is that you're about to do. And remember that when small things, when small things, when small things get, the, get all the love, big things happen. And so you might not think, you might not think that ignoring a text message because you're too tired to respond to somebody doesn't have an impact. But guess what? It does. It's the little things that compound over time. It's the same person that doesn't think that cycling $54 in a week is a big deal and so they quit without realizing that six months to a year from now, that one cycle could be 10 to 25 cycles. And so I just wanna invite you guys to start paying very close attention to how you're doing when it comes to the micro details of your life that you don't think have a big impact when in actuality, that is the foundation of everything that you are and everything that you're becoming. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. And you know what, it brings me a little bit of hope because I've heard people say, well, leaders aren't made, leaders are born that way. But it's not true because I wasn't born this way. I wasn't born to lead. And, you know, so it, I feel like it should give all of us hope that, you know, if we can change, perhaps the person that you're coaching can change, right? So how do, do you think you have such a successful team because these um, people are attracted to you because leaders just flow to other leaders? Or do you think that you really spend the time either qualifying or help assisting them in developing to their to grow into their full potential? Well, first of all, I think people are attracted to us because Eden is ridiculously good looking. So that just makes sense. <laughs> you, know, like, I, I, you know what? You have a pretty big Zach fan club here. So, you know, that can go both ways. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that, you know, like attracts like. You know, like attracts like. And then I think the thing that we do, um, that we do well, and I think this is something that we all have to learn, is we got, I think that's just a little feedback. Um, what, we, what we've got to understand and what we've got to learn and what we have to learn how to appreciate is the gestation period of everybody's growth in this business, including our own. And you said it earlier, Angela, you said in terms of allowing ourselves a little bit of grace. And I think one of the things that we do is maybe we've grown to a certain level in our leadership and we can't understand why our team isn't duplicating what we're duplicating or showing up the way we're showing up and what we forget and what we hold them hostage to is this expectation that they should grow at the same rate that we're growing at and we forget what it was like when we were planted under the soil we forget what it was like when we were struggling to grow roots we forget what it was like to break through and just to kind of peek out a little bit of a flower or a little bit of a piece of bamboo we forget what it was like and we forget where we come from and so others don't feel like they have a safe space to grow so when it comes to developing people first, to what degree are you developing yourself? And then the other thing is to what degree are you holding your people hostage to a certain expectation that they should grow at a certain rate? And that's the biggest thing, is, is valuing people's gestation period. You know, I'm, I'm looking, some, some people on this call right now have their kids with them. You're right, you have your kids on your lap, you have your kids watching this call, and I mean, just ask yourself the question, how much grace do you give a child when it takes them a little bit longer to learn how to read? How much grace do you give a child when it takes them a little bit longer to learn how to make friends on the yard? How much longer do you give grace to a child when they're learning how to tie their shoes? And yet we forget. 
right? So that's exactly, we work with them every single day. And what we forget is that most people come into this as children, literally. They are born into something completely new. Network marketing, leadership, working with people, managing people, developing people, growing people, learning our skills. You might as well drop us onto another planet surrounded by aliens and expect us to know what to do. That's how foreign this is to most people. And yet, we think, Oh, I finally understand how all this works. You should too. You should too. And I'll give you a great paradox of leadership and a great paradox of success. There's a massive paradox. There's this incredible duality that I've noticed in my own experience. In order to become a great leader, in order to become successful, you have to forget where you came from. Meaning you have to forget the stories, you have to forget the limiting beliefs, you have to forget the artificial programming, you have to forget what society taught you about yourself, you have to forget all the stories that you told yourself that aren't true that you developed when you were a little kid. You have to forget all those things. But in order to maintain and grow and continue your success, and this is the great paradox, you have to remember where you came from. Yeah. You gotta forget where you come from and you gotta always remember where you came from. And that's the duality. That's the paradox. Yeah, and that's the toughest part, isn't it? Because there's, I mean, you don't wake up and you don't tell yourself, I'm awesome, I rock, I'm fabulous. The first thing you start thinking of, I mean, if you're not properly trained and if you're not conditioned to work on your mindset, the first thing you wake up and do is pick up your phone. And already the negativity, the noise, all that stuff starts seeping in. So I really do find that the more that we condition ourselves, our bodies, our minds, our hearts, the stronger, better, and tougher we become, right? I think our biggest obstacle in network marketing is, is trying to show people what exists. And, and we're so excited and they don't get it and we can't understand why they don't get it. <laughs> like, but I, I will say how magnificent like the growth is. 10 years ago, I was playing Mafia Wars on Facebook, like literally. And as you go through the Facebook memories and you step in closer and closer, you do see the, evolu the evolution. You do see the person that you become. And while the money and the business and the freedom is awesome, uh, I would give everything up to be the person that I am today. You know, and, and I think that's what this is all about, is just keeping it simple not forgetting and just helping people go through those phases because there's so many of those limiting beliefs we actually talked about that last week what are some limiting beliefs that you have and it was funny because i said i'm too fat to talk about weight loss and then rebecca said well i'm too skinny to tell people about weight loss you, you know it's all like a, a mind fuckery if you will <laughs> you know and we really have to work on ourselves and i love that you said that because it is an evolution it really is and, and, and in terms of being too fat to talk about weight loss or too thin to talk about this or blah 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 blah. just remember this maybe write this one down and write it down in the first person right if i fight for my limitations i get to keep them yeah right just write that one down if you're taking notes if i fight for my limitations i get to keep them so if someone on our team and this is part of leadership if someone if you were to come to if you were to come to me and say, oh, Zach, I'm, I'm, too, I'm too fat to talk about weight loss. You know what I would say? You're right. Zach, I'm too thin, I'm too thin to talk about, you know, whatever. You're right. I'm, I'm not good enough to do this business because I didn't go to college. You're right. Cool. You're right. Keep fighting to be right about your limitations and see how far you go. I promise you're just going to go around in circles, loop-de-loop -loop and loop-de-doo. And here's the funny thing about it. You don't need any help fighting to be right about your limitations. The world is going to do enough of that for you. So at some point, you get to make the decision, you get to make the decision of what you're willing to tolerate. And frankly, what you have right now, where you're at in your business right now, what you're experiencing right now, you're okay with it. You're okay with it. And it's not bad or right or wrong or good or, or, or whatever, but just know that you're okay with it because you're tolerating it. And more than anything, what you're tolerating is how you're choosing to show up on a day-to-day -day basis. And again, there's 127 people on this call. That's a big organization that I know that this is probably gonna get shared with. So who knows how many people are gonna watch this, but whether you're watching live or whether you're watching recorded, everyone is somewhere different in their journey. 
But what's really important is, are you willing to take that first step of radical acknowledgement and radical awareness and radical responsibility where you just want to raise your hand and say, hey, this is the area in my life in which I want to start to show up better. And is it going to happen all overnight at once? Are you going to be, you know, are you, are you all at once going to be a, be a millionaire and be in the best shape of your life and have the great, most fulfilling relationships? Are you going to happen, have those things all happen at the same time? Of course not. Of course not. And any guru that tells you that is full of it. They're full of it. But is it all a decision away? Absolutely. It's absolutely a singular decision away. And it's about holding yourself to a standard that says, I'm just not going to tolerate showing up as this person anymore because I don't like me when I show up this way. And that's the part we don't want to admit. That's the part we don't want to look at. We don't want to look at the reality that we just don't like the way we show up in certain areas of our lives. We just don't because, because then it just means so many things about us. But what happens when you start to create a new identity for yourself? An identity says, you know, I'm the kind of person that smiles at everyone I see no matter what. I'm the kind of person who treats the busboy the same way as I treat the CEO. I'm the kind of person who helps an old lady across the street with her bags. I'm the kind of person that says, you know what? It looks like you're in a hurry. You go ahead of me in line. I'm the kind of person who blanks. And when you start to fill in that blank with I'm the kind of person who is, miracles will happen in your life. Miracles will happen in your life because you're tapping into the energy of the miraculous. That's what's so cool about this whole thing. What's so cool about this thing is that any moment that you want to, you can tap into the energy of miracles. And this isn't woo-woo. This isn't like, you know, airy-fairy stuff, even though I'm down with all of that. It's not. This is just quantum physics. This is cause plus effect. When I do this, this happens. When I do A, it leads to B and it equals C. It's basic. It's really basic. And we overcomplicate it because we give so much power to our thoughts that we begin to suffocate ourselves and we begin to paralyze ourselves. And we go into comparison mode and we go into all these things that in no way, shape, or form identify with who it is that you say you want to become. So how quickly are you willing to cut off that thought process and start to fill in the blank with some kind of new identity? That's the big question for you tonight. I love it. And you made me laugh so much because I remember um, coming up to you in Hilton Head, <laughs> Top Achievers, and I'm like, okay, so what are you doing today? What are you going to do to prospect? How many cycles are you at so far? What are you going to do to grow? Right? And you're like, well, right now I'm just going to chill on this hammock right here and go read a book. I'm like, how is he reading the book? Why is he laying on a hat? <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but you were like so chill. And I was just so like red and attached to the outcome. And I always like remember that day and I'm like, I wish I had that peace, that letting go. And I tell you guys, for someone like me, it's a process. You know, I don't know if you watch Seinfeld, but many times throughout the day, I literally have to say to myself like, serenity now, serenity now. Like, right? You don't have to fight every battle. You don't need to white knuckle and be such a heartaholic about everything. You know what I mean? Just embrace it, grow into it. And I, I love all these things that you're pointing out because it, it starts right here, right? It starts within. Um, and people sense that. People sense when you're like desperate for an enrollment, when you're trying to get them to, I, I think the biggest part of duplication and growing a team and getting people to really um, follow your lead is just asking them what they want and supporting them, right? So let's talk a little bit about how to get a new person started, how you create that massive duplication amongst your organization, because we have a really, um, we have a great system in place, right? We have the say, share, and do, we have our six simple systems. So. Let's talk about how you personally get someone started. So the, here, here's a real big important key to this whole duplication thing. First of all, what I want everyone to understand is that everything you do duplicates, positive or negatively. Everything duplicates. And the other thing to remember is when it comes to duplication, when it comes to network marketing, write this one down. And for those of you guys that have kids, you're going to appreciate this. What parents do in moderation, children do in excess. What parents do in moderation, 
children do in excess. So if I'm around a little kid and I say a word that starts with SH and I say it one time by accident, what's the kid gonna do? The kid's gonna say it a hundred times until you make them stop. Well, guess what? Network marketing works the exact same way. So if your way of getting someone started is by sending them a very simple email, for example, guess what they're going to send someone that they get started? Instead of a one paragraph email, they're gonna send them a 10 paragraph email, okay? It's, it's the little things that we have to do repeatedly over time. And if you're constantly changing how you get someone started, you're gonna create confusion in your organization. You want someone to be able to come into your business and 30 minutes after you get them started, they should be able to turn around and teach someone how to do exactly what you did with them. And one of the things that many people struggle with is that they create an environment, and this one's gonna sting some of you, I, I, I know it is, and I, I hate to break it to you, but I'm not here to like do cotton, flowers and cotton candy, Angela wouldn't have me on here for that. But one of the things that you're doing that's hurting your business is that your team is people dependent and not system dependent. Your team's dependent on you. You're answering every message, you're doing every phone call, you're posting everything in the group, you're buying their event tickets for them, you're tagging them on every post to get on every single call, you're doing everything for them. And you're enabling them instead of empowering them. And that is a people-dependent culture. And the problem with having a people-dependent culture is that you will never put yourself in a place of having walk-away money. You will never have beach money. You'll never have true residual income. You will never ever have the kind of freedom that you see so many of us enjoying because your team is completely reliant on you, which is why duplication is so important and why how you start somebody is so important and why you want to do it the exact same way every single time so that your organization becomes system dependent and not people dependent. System dependent and not people dependent. And the other reason you have an obligation to do this is not just for your own interests and not for your own freedom, but most importantly, God forbid something were to happen to you. If the people you're bringing into this business are dependent on you and something happens to you, now you're putting their family and their livelihood in jeopardy because they're all dependent on you. They're crippled by your holding on to everything that they do as opposed to just knowing, okay, you know what? Vicky's out of the game for a little bit. I know I can plug into the system. I know I can get paid no matter what's happening right now. So how I get someone started might be a little bit different. So I don't want to I don't want to confuse anybody, you know, Angela, because I know you guys and Lex, you guys run a you guys run a system. So the, the key is this is however you guys are getting people started, do it the same with everybody. And there's really just two tracks, right? Like you're getting someone started who says, I want to build not, I want to do the opportunity. And then you have the other track of people are saying, hey, I just want to eat for free, get my products paid for. Those are slightly different tracks but do them the same every single time. And here's why. What you gotta get about network marketing, what you're inviting people into, is the equivalent of a virtual franchise. So if I go to a McDonald's, which I won't, but if I were to go to a McDonald's here in San Diego, right, and then I were to fly to the East Coast and go to a McDonald's in Hoboken, what am I gonna notice? The outsides of the building might be different, but when I walk into the building, the cashier is gonna greet me with the exact same question at every McDonald's in the world. The shake machine is gonna be in the same place, the fry machine is gonna be in the same place, they're gonna put three pickles and two dollops of ketchup on every single burger, whether I'm doing it here, Hoboken, or Australia. It's, and that's why people invest in franchises, because it's a proven, predictable, results-driven system. And that's what network marketing is. But instead of having to spend a million dollars on McDonald's, right? And then another couple hundred grand to go to Hamburger University, which is a real thing. You can get started for the price of some quality nutrition and build a multi-million dollar business potentially, or even a six-figure business, or even maybe replace your income and make 50 grand a year working from home, which is still remarkable. So duplication is everything. And remember though, that people are not duplicable, systems are. It's the system that you want to duplicate. It's the processes that you want to duplicate. It's the interactions that you want to duplicate. It's the language that you use that you want to duplicate. That's what matters when it comes to duplication. Do you ever have anyone on your team who is totally not freaking coachable? And yeah, of course. And you're like, go to easy systems. And then again, they're asking you a question. You're like, okay, I, you know, I sent you to this page. All the information is right there. And every day they're expecting you to be like their Google. How do you handle a person like that with, um, 
with professionalism? <laughs> For us, it's a one-time conversation. It's a one-time conversation on the front end and potentially a one-time one conversation on the back end. And the one-time conversation on the front end, I'm gonna keep this part really short because I know we were only supposed to go 30 minutes tonight. But I'm happy to go a little bit longer if you'd like me to. But um, the front end conversation is as simple as this. It's look, I'm the GPS, Isogenics is the vehicle. So just like the GPS in your car, you tell me where you wanna go, okay? So I'm gonna say, go straight, go straight, make a right, make a right. If you make a left, when I say make a right, okay, no big deal, recalculating, recalculating, go straight, go straight, make a left, but then you make a right, when I say make a left, recalculating. At the end of the day, ICJX is the vehicle, I'm the GPS. And just like the GPS in your car, I'm gonna give you the fastest way with the least amount of traffic to get to the destination that you say you wanna to get to. But ultimately, you're the driver. That's it, that's my conversation with everybody up front. So then, when it comes to a couple weeks down the road, blah, 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 and they're not following my instructions, I literally put my hands up in there and say, hey, look, it's your business, you're the CEO of your company, you can do whatever you want. At the end of the day, I'm just the GPS. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. just the GPS, like, I, it's, you know, like, it's not like, it's, if I'm the GPS in your car, and I'm telling you turn right, and you're gonna turn left, and that left is gonna take you over a, over a cliff, like, what am I gonna do? You know, like, I'm not gonna grab the steering wheel, I can't, I'm a GPS, I'm objective. I'm objective, so I don't attach to it because we've already had a very clear upfront agreement about my role in the process. Isn't that so true? I always think about like, what would Alexis do, right? Like, would Alexis be like, hey girl, did you go over system one yet? Hey girl, I know I messaged you three days ago. Like, she would never do that. Well, <laughs> first of all, Alexis is mafia, so she would handle things in a very different way, right? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You you got to have some self-respect too. You know, you, you've got to really, when you allow someone to, I almost feel like it's someone just taking advantage of you and your time. And, you know, I, I do understand that we want this business to grow. When I started, I would get up out of bed at two in the morning if somebody called me to enroll with two shakes, you know, <laughs> but as you're vested, you kind of have some boundaries, right? This is a business. Shop is open certain times and shop is closed certain times. If Barnes and Noble tells you that a book is $8.99, you're not gonna go in there and say, well, I got five bucks, you know? So it really is about setting a standard. Yeah, and remembering that you teach people how to treat you. You teach people how to treat you. And it's, look, it's a, it's a very simple, you know, biblical proverb, which is give a, give a person a fish, they'll eat for a day, teach them to fish, they'll eat for a lifetime. And so you just got to ask yourself the question again, is what I'm about to do, am I giving Celeste a fish right now or am I teaching her to fish right now? Am I giving Lauren a fish or am I teaching her to fish right now? What am I doing by doing this? And what you've got to be very careful is justifying the times when you're going to give them a fish. Because remember what we talked earlier about right? Big things happen when small things get all the love. But remember, we're teaching children. This is brand new and children are advantageous and children will come back for more and more and more. So even if you think, oh, well, I'm just sending her the link on, you know, why there's sugar in, 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 in the shakes, as opposed to encouraging her to go to icejackshealth.net, even though you think that you're just doing him or her a favor, that tiny little thing that you're doing that tiny little thing that you're doing is creating an environment of enablement. And the more you create an environment of enabling, guess what happens? Your team and their results are now gonna become your responsibility and their failure, quote unquote, is gonna get laid on you. And why? Why? Because, well, you did everything for me. So if you did everything for me and this isn't working out, then I can absolutely point the finger. But if you empower people from day one, if you encourage people, if you help people to understand that they are the creators of this reality and that you're going to be by their side step by step, just like the GPS, now you put them in a position to take responsibility. Yeah. You put them in a position to be resourceful and to take responsibility. And that's how you grow leaders, in my opinion. And I'm probably wrong, but it's just how we do things. Yeah, I don't think you're wrong. I don't think anyone else thinks you're wrong. So, <laughs> but I'm okay with that. With that, I'm just, I'm, I'm, just, I'm saying, like, this just, I, I, and again, that's thing that, that's the other thing we say to people, by the way, when they're not coachable and they're not following our training, like, I just say them really, I just say it really easy, and they come to me for help. I say, look, my way is not the only way of doing things. It's just the only way that I've been successful. So it's the only way that I know how to teach you. 
So if you want to do things in a different way, that's cool. I just can't help you because I'd be lying to you if I knew how to make you successful doing it that way. But I do hope you find what you're looking for because my way is not the only way. Yeah, I love it. Alexis always says, why we create the wheel? You know, why do you need to make up your own file system and documents and do all this extra stuff? There really is something in place and it's just making it harder. And if the system is proven to be successful, right? If it worked for so many, just follow it. I think that a good work ethic, uh, a, a deep rooted why, and, and just coachability, really for me are the main ingredients to, to be a leader, right? Don't reinvent the wheel. So I got you for another four minutes, if you will. Um, for you and Alexis, I'll go for another hour. I don't care. <laughs> You're the best. I don't know if Kathy would like that. We have our 9 p.m. Oh, that's right. We have another call. <laughs> but let's let's go. Vicky let's says go the hour. I, I am ter I am a little scared if I don't if I don't do what Vicky says. Vicky could Vicky Vicky could get me. Vicky she, could do she, some. She's Vicky. the best. She's texting me in caps with the f bomb, saying he is so darn good. That was a really nice way of saying. <laughs> Vicky is awesome. Let's keep going. Whatever. Let's just keep going. We'll have some fun with it. Let's if keep you guys, going. If you guys, you guys type in the chat box. If you guys want to keep going and it feels good for you, we'll keep going. If not, I'm totally happy. You guys tell me. It's up to you. Yeah, we're we're in. We're in, buddy. So, <laughs> so here's the other side of that, though. The other side of it is being okay with other people going off and trying to figure it out on their own and without holding them hostage to what you think they should be doing. That's really important. It's really important to say, you know what? Like my way is not the only way. Go do your thing if you need to because what will happen in most cases is they'll go off, they'll try and do it their own way and they'll come back to you. And they'll say, you know what, it just didn't work. I'm ready. I'm ready. And I, look, I've had people in my organization go out for five years, literally after five years, have come and said, okay, I'm ready to follow the system. Great. Let's get to work. Right? So just like as a teenager, there were times, just like as a young adult, there were times where my mom knew that I just kind of had to figure it out. Just like you parents, right? Just like when all of us were a little bit younger, there were times when the kids just got to figure it out. Like, look at Jess's daughter on screen right now. She's like, yeah, I'm going to figure it out. You see her raising her arms? That was awesome, right? So, so there are times where we've just got to let people figure it out. And oftentimes we hear the language, trust the process, right? We've heard that, trust the process. And for as much as it's important for us to trust our process, it's also important for us to trust their process. Because we can get into a whole conversation, I know Alexis and I could go on and on about this for hours, but let's not forget that there's a spiritual side to people's growth as well. There's a spiritual side to the things that they get to evolve through. There's a spiritual side to the things that they get to learn throughout their, throughout their journey with us. And sometimes we inhibit them by trying to pull them along with us as opposed to like a mama bird, allowing them to get knocked out of the nest and just trusting that they're going to find a way to start flapping their wings and fly. And that's on, that part's on us. It's just holding that space of, of complete trust. Because remember, a lot of people who want to go out and do things their own way are people who are fighting for a sense of significance. They're fighting for a sense of feeling like they're worthy. And they're probably fighting for a sense of feeling like they, get, like they have a voice. And so we don't have to get too much into psychology or anything along those lines. But psychology plays a whole huge role here. So oftentimes when I see somebody doing that, I know it has nothing to do with me. I know it has nothing to do with system. And it probably has everything to do with the story that they've told themselves about why they need to posture, about why they need to put, puff up their chest, about why they need to be the main thing. And if that's their journey from a spiritual perspective, then who am I to get in the way of that by thinking I need to tell them how to do things a certain way? That's not what this is about. No one came to network marketing to have another boss or to have another job. So you work with the people that want to work with you. You match energy for energy. If someone gives you 25%, you give 25% back. 50%, you give 50% back. But here's the real trick. If someone gives you 100%, you got to give 200%. That's the deal. That's the deal. That's the, that's the agreement we got to make with each other, right? 25 gets 25. 50 gets 50. 100, you give 200. Because it's so rare that somebody gives you 100%. It's so rare that someone says they're all in. It's so rare that someone's going to run beside you the way that you want to run with somebody. So when that person shows up, and if you keep showing up in a way that's in integrity or with the things that you wrote in that list, those people will show up and they will explode in a magnificent way because you were ready for them. Yeah. And you're supporting them and not choking them out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's almost like a rebellious teenager. If I keep saying, 100%. don't do 
this way. Don't do that. Why didn't you show up to the call? You weren't on the Zoom. You're not going to the event. Are you kidding me? They want to run away from you. Nobody wants to be in a relationship where you they they're you know have the leash on. And and so um, I do like that. I do like the um, plugging people in, being their navigation, and really just letting them explore and figure out who and what they are. And I like that we're not attached to the outcomes because either way, I'm sitting down and I'm working. I mean, you can find one. That's cool. Don't make that one your whole world. You got one, you plug them in, put your head down and get back to work. I think sometimes we find one and all of a sudden we go into this micromanagement mode like, okay, I need to do this with her. I need to do that with her. I need to, and it, it gets a little um, insane and you kind of put your business to the side and then that one can leave and you're like, shit, all my volume, everything depended on that one because I wasn't working. I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. Yeah, and another way of looking at it, another great analogy is it's imagine playing tennis, right? So like you get on the court, they get on the court, they say, okay, I want to play this game with you. So you take the ball and you hit the ball to them. And then what do you do? We wait. wait for them to hit the ball back to you. And if they don't hit the ball back to you, fine. You just go on to the next court and start a new game and you hit the ball to that person. And if they hit the ball back right away, you hit it back to them. And if they don't, you go to the next court. And what you want to have is multiple games of tennis going on all the time. But what you don't do is you don't hit the ball to somebody. Imagine this in real life. Imagine hitting the ball to somebody. They just let the ball roll right by them. They don't hit it back to you. And you just stand on the other side of the court waiting. Like how long are you going to wait there until you recognize like, you know, this isn't a whole lot of fun. I came to play tennis. And if I wanted to hit the ball against the wall, I would have hit against the wall. No, but I wanted to play with you. But you don't want to play back with me, so I'm going to go find a partner who does. And we just cre keep creating these games where we hit the ball and hit the ball back and hit the ball and hit the ball back, and that's it. It's just and that have simple. have fun. And have fun with this business. Because the moment, the moment it stops being fun, you're going to dread doing it. This should be fun. You should be receiving value. You should be growing, and you should be giving value to other people. This should not feel stressful if it's stressful something's going on here right um vicky put up a post so this is the last topic vicky put up a, a post a, a zach ism as i call them and it said if you fight for your limitations you get to keep them right no that's not the one i was looking at it was it was the um the commitment one who put that post up it was a, somebody put up a post, something you said about, oh, commit, here it is. Vicky quotes you a lot, so excuse me. I'm not, I'm here, how are you? Uh, sorry, Zach. Um, so the, the quote was, I just love East Coasters, East Coasters are the best. <laughs> commitment is a one-time thing. If oh. you find yourself recommitting, then you were never committed in the first place. Vicky put that up this morning, and I thought that was very valuable, especially because tonight we agreed to talk about um, commitment. Yeah, we, that was from, la I think that was from uh, the call I did from, for our team last night. We were talking about, we were talking about commitment, and you know, what I, what I said was, that was one of the things I said, but what I said was, imagine that your business was a person, and you're in relationship with this person. When you first get together, you're like, oh my God, I'm so excited to be with you. Like, this is great. Like, this is amazing. And then a week later, you were like, uh, I don't really know if this is going to work out. I'm not going to call you for a couple of days. I'm going to ignore your text messages. I'll probably do that for like two or three weeks. And then in the fourth week, oh my God, I missed you. Like, we have the best thing. Like, we had so much fun together that week, blah, 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 blah. And then you ghost again for three or four days and you come back again for a week and you ghost again. So imagine that, again, your business is a person and that's how you're showing up. How long would your business as a person want to be in a relationship with you? Not very long. No, not long. And imagine long. then you go to your business and you say, or this person, you say, hey, look, I'm like, I'm like 60% of the way in with you on this whole, I'm like 60% of the way in. I'm like 60% of the way in. Sorry, I'm, I'm not really looking for that in a partner. So we commit one time. Commitment is a one-time thing. That's the thing I want everyone to get. All these like people are like, I'm recommitted, I'm recommitted. Nope, you were never committed in the first place. Commitment is a one-time thing, and then you do the work forever. You commit once, do the work forever. That simple.
Commit one time, do the work forever. Just yeah. like in a relationship. Yeah, and I think we owe it to ourselves and we owe it to our team, right? Our team is looking to us to be an example. Our team is looking to see what we're doing. Are we getting on the calls? Are we going to the events? If I'm constantly making excuses, it's not always gonna be easy. I mean, kids get sick, husbands break legs, thing, things happen in life. But my commitment to isogenics for six years has never wavered, has never faltered. Have there been good days? Absolutely, great days, the best of days. Have there been bad days? Yes, right? But I'm, I'm here, you know, I, if not this, I couldn't imagine what else I would be doing with my life, you know? So decide, decide that you're in today and stay in, stay in. And, and it's, I mean, it's like, look, you're giving, you're, when, you, when you come into this, like just imagine, and, and all of you have the ability to do this tonight. You absolutely have the, the ability to make the decision tonight. Just imagine that isogenics is your new baby. You've just decided, you've given birth to this new thing, this new idea, this new concept. For those of you that have children, and even if you don't have children, this one's pretty easy to imagine. What if like five days to being, an apparent, being a parent, you're like, oh, I was up all night, they were crying, like they won't eat, they won't sleep, blah, 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 blah. Like, you know what, I think I'm over this whole parenting thing. I'm, I'm, I'm good. No, you take responsibility for life. Yeah. And you do the work forever. Now, isogenics doesn't have to be your life, and I want you to get that. But if you want it to yield the results that you're looking for, then you can do this part-time, or you can do this full-time, but you cannot do this sometime. It's just like parenting. It's just like being in a relationship. It's not a sometime game. It's a full-time or part-time, but it's a complete and total awareness. And if you are doing it part-time, when you are doing it on your time, you give it 110% all the time. If all you have is an hour, you work that hour like your life depends on it. Because remember, what parents do in moderation, children do in excess. Yeah, I love it. And you know, I, I love Gary V. He's Russian like me, but he, he's great. And he said, this is not your granddaddy's days of social media. I mean, if you guys suck at selling the value pack, Google how to sell a value pack. If you guys stink at handling objections, literally look up podcasts on how to handle objections. Anything that you want to improve upon, anything that you want to get better at, there is so much information available to you if you just decide that that's an area where you want to become proficient, right? So if you decide yeah. today that you want to become the best leader, practice it, do it. Don't just read the books and listen to the podcast, but really step into the role. It's the difference between, you know, watching a YouTube video on skateboarding and getting out there with your skateboard and practicing over and over and over until you finally say, oh my God, I did a little bit better. Oh my God, I did a little bit better. Because I promise you, if you keep just giving it a little bit each day in five years, you're going to be amazing amazing at this and if you just change one life in the interim it was all worth it right i don't remember the no's i've probably have gotten five thousand no's because what sits right here is every single yes every life that that has enhanced every person whose quality of life his relationship their health has improved because i had the courage you have the ability to make a difference in this world. Why sit on that? Where are you? I thought, oh, there you are, Zach. <laughs> oh, you do your thing, man. I'm just listening to you. That's great. <laughs> Take it away. No, I, and I think what's important is what you said is, is, this, is this idea of like, are you willing to give yourself five to seven to 10 years if that's what it takes? Are you willing to think outside of, you know, the week to week cycles and things like that. Are you willing to really, and this is what I love about Eden, my wife has always said this, Eden just looks at everything as practice. Every interaction, every conversation, every objection is all just practice. Because what she knows is, is that by continually practicing, she's gonna develop her skills that are compound, that they'll, and they'll compound over time. And how much time that takes is irrelevant. It's just irrelevant. Because even in network marketing, if you're on the long end of it, and it takes you, 10 years 
to let's say earn uh, you know, a multiple six figure income residually. That's first of all, compressing a 40 year career in 10 years, not to mention the odds of you making that multiple six figure income in a corporate environment, very small. So would it be worth it? Is it worth it to you? That's the big question. Is it worth it? And if it is, then you develop a philosophy around this long-term idea and you just, and, and this is just a, this is just a fun saying, right? Is you go, you're, you're willing to be bad enough, long enough until you get good. And guys, you, the most epic story, one of the most epic stories in Isogenics history is Alexis Romano and her five-year growth trajectory. It's ridiculous. I think she went, I, I might be 12,000 or like $975,000 in her fifth year or something crazy like that. Yes. I mean, you can learn to do anything. You can learn to do anything. But before you learn to do some stuff, you're gonna have to unlearn some of the stuff that you do. I love it. So thank you so much for being on. It's always so much fun and it always seems to go by like that, doesn't it? It's always really fast. And I just hope I, I have so much, I have such a deep respect for, for you and, 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 and Lex, obviously, and, and Tara and the whole East Coast family. I'm East Coast by association. My mom's from Long Island, New York, so it always feels good to be with, be with some of the East Coasters. Um, but I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just grateful for you. I'm grateful for the company. Um, I, I hope this served you guys well, but most importantly, don't thank me. Like, that's all like well and good, and I appreciate that, but the best way you can thank me, the best way you can thank me is by taking some of what you learned tonight, a nugget of what you learned tonight, take something and go, apply it and go create a result go create a result and then come find me at celebration and hey say hey zach here's what i did after your call and here was the result that you that you that i got that's the greatest show of gratitude you can give me the greatest thanks you could ever give me or lex or or, or angela or tara or whoever the greatest gift you can give us as a thank you is by paying forward what you've learned if you've learned anything. And if you haven't learned anything, thank you for investing an hour of your time with me tonight. I do appreciate it. <laughs> you are such a good egg. I love you. At the count of three, can we give Zach a big New York woohoo? Oh, and New Jersey. I'm sorry, I gotta say New Jersey. <laughs> Thanks, Angela. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Don't mess with them. Don't mess with them. Go inside.